Hi, my name is Josh, and I watch the FCC approval database so you don't have to. Today, we're going to do a virtual teardown of the Angel Care AC1300 baby monitor. This time, we're going to do the parent side of the, the unit. Last time, we reviewed the child's room side, this little angel thing with its little wings. Today, we'll talk about the little, the little tablet that shows the video. As you can see here, it's going to have some recharging circuit because it recharges, so it's got an internal battery. It has this big monitor, has some buttons, some menuing, etc. And it's supposed to have the ability to talk through the parent unit and the angel unit to have some sort of conversation with your, your child. So let's have a look at this thing. Here's the chassis. Nothing all that interesting. They've got the buttons separated out on a separate PCB, which is pretty typical. There's a big old panel here with a big standard connector on it. Then, we go down. You can see there's a speaker right here, which means that this is probably the battery coming up under there. Here's that button PCB. Again, nothing all that interesting. It does have the micro USB charging port on it though, which is kind of cool. And the other neat thing here is they put the reset button on the back. So it's all of the inputs on this one ribbon cable. Pretty handy. So here's the back. Again, there's that speaker and then the little LiPo pouch coming up and across. We've got power, ground, and probably temperature. So, that came up through here somewhere for the battery connector. And this is the big input connector, which has got all of these traces going up and around. The other thing I want to point out while we're looking at this big picture is we're going to come out of the microcontroller here, which is the Sonics 9330. When we looked at the baby unit, we saw the 9331, and they're, they're a pair. So, out of here, we're going to go through this interesting section to go to the video. That's all I'm going to say about that, but it'll become important in a little bit. Also, in the child side unit, they had what seemed to be a lucky can in there, i.e. a can that had seen better days, maybe like lucky socks that you, you never wash, you just wear because they bring you luck. It looks like in the parent unit, they're using another lucky can that they've used over and over again, and therefore it's covered in rust, which is just awful. I thought in the child unit that maybe it was that it was a proper unit from China that had gone on a shipping container, gotten wet, something like that. Like I had thought that that rust was a sign of how authentically final rev it must be. But based on the fact that I'm seeing rust on this board, along with the other things I'm seeing on this board, I don't think that's the case. I'm pretty sure this is a pre-production unit. So. Here's our main microcontroller. It's the Sonics 9330 VFG, which is always fun. And as we saw last time on the child side unit, there's the 3331, which takes in a camera, puts out video over here. Then on the 9330, it has a LCD interface, which goes out to an LCD panel. Audio goes back and forth, and then some data goes back and forth as well. So that's what this does. We also expect to find another one of these Winbond spy flashes here. And then there's the AMIC A7121, which is a 2.4 gigahertz transceiver, and the Norgay AP1110, 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz power amplifier, which, by the way, has RF in through to RF out. That's going to matter in a second. So. We scroll down, here's our microcontroller, here's our spy flash, we've got our connector for the speakers here, and if we look in, it looks like this guy connects in over there somehow. So this is probably an LM386, something like that, audio amp. And just, you know, it's a pretty standard part. If you haven't seen it before, it's, it's worth having a look at. I'll, I'll include a link down below. 
Uh, whenever you build these on breadboards, be careful. Keep all your wires super duper short. Otherwise, it turns into an AM radio. and It'll just receive whatever the loudest AM station is around you. Anyway, so that's this. Then the battery connector was right around here. So we're going to need some sort of battery charge controller. And I'm not sure where that is. It might be this thing. But this is the connector to our LCD panel. And I'm pretty sure that this little pot right here, this little trimmer pot, is for the brightness of the backlight, would be my guess. Otherwise, this would be the charging circuit, which means that this might be the charging current or something like that, which is terrifying. Although, it's nothing compared to this. We'll come back to this. First, let's have a quick glance at the radio circuit. So this is our radio transceiver IC. As we saw before, we've got RFI and RFO on pins 5 and 6. That's the RF input and the RF output. On the child unit, I didn't really think about that too hard, but the input and the output need to be separated here because our RF amplifier here, that 1110, only passes the RF through one way. It doesn't have a switch internal to bypass itself. So the RF out, which is pin six, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, right here, should come out, goes through this whole chain of stuff up. And I don't know if it goes, it seems to go under this. It's hard to call. In any case, it comes up through here into pin two of our amplifier, which is where the RF in comes in, and then should come out pins 7 and 8 up here and off up through to here. This is probably a filter of some sort. I would bet that it's a bandpass filter, maybe a saw filter. So it goes up through here and then that goofy little bent paperclip antenna is right there. So if we go over here to pin 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Sorry, five. This is our input for the RF whenever we're receiving. This comes out and goes through some unpopulated stuff up and over through maybe an amplifier stage of some sort over and into this little guy. And I bet that this is an RF switch. I haven't found markings on it though, so it's not clear to me whether it is or not. So that would let us use some other signal on here to switch this around. Or maybe the signal comes out of here. Actually, it looks like it does, doesn't it? So if we follow these, oh, nope, then we hit some vias. I'm not going to bother chasing those all the way through, but this is probably an RF switch, which is a interesting detail to allow the amplified output to go through when it's transmitting, or the straight up filtered input to come through and over to a, a low noise amp, amp of some sort on its way in. So here's more of that stuff though. This is the thing I want to talk about next, which we can see a bit better right here. This is glorious. This is just mind-blowing. This is bodge work at a level that I have never seen in a board that isn't my own. Uh, so what we've got here is a bunch of high bandwidth lines, high switch rate lines that go out to this LCD. So this is going from the microcontroller out to that big old LCD where people look at their baby. These lines are all digital lines. They're probably poorly terminated, they're probably messy, and they're pretty fast. What it looks like they've done is taken capacitors, and it looks like there's two values of capacitors, maybe three. There's a few of these bigger ones, and then there's a bunch of these smaller ones. Or it might be that these are the, they're the same value, and it's just that they ran out of the little ones, and so they had to switch to their big ones. Um, they've gone through and scraped off the solder mask, soldered on one of these little caps where they can over to ground. Where they can't get straight to ground, they've come in with zero ohm jumpers 
and stuck those on the end. It's just, it's amazing. And they've done pretty much every single line here. And to do that, they had to really think this through. Like, they've done a very careful job of this. They've also gone in on this line, which comes all the way over here somewhere, and globbed on a different looking capacitor. That might, that might be the same kind with just a little bit of crispy flux on the side. Then up here, on the spy bus of this wind bond chip, because these are spy flash, and if you're not familiar with the pin out of those, it tends to be something like this. So that was pin six. Pin six here is the clock. Apparently the clock edge was just too rough for this thing to deal with. So they took this capacitor and ran it there. Now, why it isn't there is curious. Because um, that is the not hold line, which should be zero whenever they're going. But maybe, <laughs> maybe it was noisy enough that it caused issues. Anyway, so yeah, so that's just amazing. The sheer amount of these capacitors that are all over the place to soften stuff. Oh, and there's one more, that's the last one, right here. I honestly have no idea what these two resistors are doing. They're probably a voltage divider or something. <laughs> but in order to smooth things out, they just plopped one of these little capacitors in on top of the two resistors. So yeah, I, I don't know off the top of my head what the disposition of this is, but I really hope the FCC is not approving this device, because crap like this is just awful. <laughs> and it's all over on this board. This board is just absolutely terrible. So maybe this is just them seeing what they need to do in order to actually pass, with the slight Hail Mary of maybe if it passes they'll be okay. But oh man, it's just a mess. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. If you have an answer to any of the questions that you see, please provide it. It's great if we can help each other along in this learning process. And uh, I hope I see you here again soon. Thanks. Have a good day.